What's going on, everybody? Good Friday morning. We have made it to day two of the 2024 NFL Draft. Kicks off in about seven hours. I will be turning the stream on a little bit before it starts, and then we will be covering it. Should be about a five-hour uh, process tonight as we get through these picks. Seahawks don't pick until middle third, so it's going to be a while. We're going to be sitting through a lot of stuff that doesn't directly involve the Seahawks, but we could trade up. We could trade back. We don't know what's going to happen exactly, so we got to let things play out, <coughs> and um, I'm excited to see what happens. Obviously, it's not as exciting as day one, but it's exciting nevertheless. So, let's talk a little bit about yesterday. Um, obviously, the Seahawks take Byron Murphy, but this video is not really going to be talking about Byron Murphy. It's going to be talking about the effect Byron Murphy has on some other players on this team. Now... Some of that effect will hopefully be really good for some of these players. Hopefully, having Byron Murphy allows Leonard Williams to be a more destructive player on the interior. Hopefully, Byron Murphy allows a guy like uh, like uh, Tyrell Dodson to be a better player because he's got less to worry about in front of him. Like, all that stuff. I'm not talking about that stuff either, although that stuff is definitely going to have to be discussed as this uh, offseason goes along, and it will be. I'm talking more about the effect that it might have on a guy like a Draymond Jones, because ever since the pick was punched in by the Seattle Seahawks for Byron Murphy II, a lot of people have been wondering what's going to happen with Draymond Jones now. So, <clears throat> Draymond Jones, for those of you who are maybe uninitiated here, was a very expensive free agency signing by the Seahawks last season. We gave him a $51.5 million contract. And he was okay last year. He was okay. There were a lot of mitigating circumstances. There were a lot of things working against him, but he was just okay. And with his contract starting to really balloon up in years two and three, there are a fair few people that are looking at Draymond Jones and wondering, can we get off of this guy now? And Generally speaking, I have always erred on the side of answering no to that because the contract wasn't really constructed in a way that would allow us to get out from under it yet, and I wanted to see what he could do in Mike McDonald's defense. Well, now we have Byron Murphy the second. I think we have to revisit this conversation and maybe even come to a different answer at the end of it because this defensive line has suddenly gotten very crowded. Now, that's not to suggest that the Seattle Seahawks should ignore the value of having a deep defensive line rotation and having multiple guys that are starter caliber or maybe even beyond that, that they can pull in and out of the game to keep fresh. And I still think it's possible that this team decides to employ that as a strategy and part with Draymond Jones next offseason. However, you look at this defensive line, you've got Leonard Williams, who you just gave a ton of money to. You've got Draymond Jones, who you just gave a ton of money to last offseason. And then you've got Byron Murphy, the second now, who you just spent the 16th overall pick on. You've got Jaron Reed. You've got Cam Young. You've got Jonathan Hankins. You've got Mike Morris. Now, those three guys, three of those four guys I just mentioned at the tail end there, those are the nose tackles, so they're a little bit separate from all this. But the point is, that's a grand total of seven guys. And not all of those guys are going to demand massive numbers of snaps. A guy like Jonathan Hankin should probably only be playing like 15 snaps a game. Mike Morris, this is basically going to be his rookie year because he was hurt all last year. Who knows what he's going to be able to do. But... There are some guys on that list who you are going to want to see on the field a lot if you're a Seahawks fan or a member of this coaching staff or a member of this front office. So it is possible that this Seahawks team looks at it and goes, okay, Leonard Williams, we just gave him $63 million. We need to get him on the field as much as possible. Byron Murphy, we love him. We get He's 21 years old. We spent the 16th overall pick on him. We feel like he's ready to go eat. We feel like he's ready to dominate in the NFL. We want him on the field as much as possible. So that leaves Draymond Jones as the odd man out. And while I 
maintain that it might be a good idea to keep him around to protect yourself against injuries, protect yourself against uh, him hitting a rookie wall at the end of the year, and just giving yourself a really deep rotation. It's time to start to ask, what if the team just decides, let's just move on from him, let's just get him out of here, and let's just try to uh, recoup a little bit of value. It's not going to be a lot because he's coming off a bad year. And just let Leonard Williams and Byron Murphy have the floor. Just let them have all the snaps. Just let them play 75 to 80% of the game. So if you look at the depth on this team on the defensive line behind those guys, guys like Miles uh, Adams, guys like Mike Morris, if you like those guys enough, maybe. Maybe you can then look at Draymond Jones and say expendable. So I wanted to look at his contract a little bit so we understand what we're getting into here. So I went to OTC.com for Draymond Jones. Um, if you look at 2024, you can see that cutting Draymond Jones right now would cost the Seahawks $20.3 million, which is about $2.2 million more than it would have cost to cut him, to keep him, excuse me. So that's a no-go. That's uh, There's no point in doing that. That's not helping anybody. So we can't cut him yet. Now, if we cut him post-June 1st, you can then save about $4.5 million. You would reduce the cap hit from 18.2 to 13.7 approximately. Okay, that's actually going to handle most of the um, cap uh, strain that you're currently dealing with as a uh, as a Seattle Seahawks capologist. Like, I've, I've done the math. We don't have enough cap space to um, um, afford all these rookie draft picks. So that would take care of most of it. You could trade him. If you traded him right now, it would be identical to cutting him post-June 1st. So you would save about $4.8 million. Or, and this would be the hard one, but, well, let's put it on the table here. You could trade him after June 1st and only take on $6.7 million and then have the savings be $11.5 million. Now, when you're trading him, that makes things a little bit weird because then you're asking the team that you're trading him to to inherit part of the contract. And given that Draymond Jones didn't have a very good season last year, I don't think there are very many teams out there that are going to want to inherit eleven and a half million dollars of um cap hit on Draymond Jones. So this is probably not very realistic. So what could happen here? Well number one, you could just cut him. You could cut him post June first, save the four and a half million, or you could work out some kind of a deal where you trade him and you get some kind of, I don't know, fifth round pick or sixth round pick back. I don't think it would be too much more than that. I, I don't know why anybody would be willing to part with a significant asset. And also it's worth noting that in this particular draft class, picks after the fifth round, I'd say even picks in the fifth round, not really all that valuable. This class is pretty shallow, but you might be able to get something like that. So let, let, let's just say it's something like a fifth round pick. And then you might come to some kind of an agreement where you agree to pay him a little bit more of his contract than you would have otherwise. So... It is doable. It does save the team a little bit of money. It, it's just not going to be anything where we get equal value back. So that's what I would guess what happens at this point. I, I think that when you take a Byron Murphy, 16th overall, you are planning on getting him on the field as much as possible. I do think there is a scenario where the Seahawks might just say, look, let's just let it ride for one year and then we cut... Draymond next year because next year is easy next year you only eat 6.7 million in dead cap if you cut him and you save 16.5 that's easy I I think there is a possibility that that happens but I'm starting to get the vibe and it's just a vibe I don't know if it's actually going to happen but I am starting to get a little bit of a vibe here that the team is going to try to trade Draymond Jones in the next couple days just save a little bit of money, maybe like five or six million total off of the cap hit, and then maybe get back a fifth or sixth round pick just to say they got something out of it. So let me know what you guys think. I'll see you guys later.
Uh, go Hawks. See you guys tonight for the day two of the draft. But um, yeah, I, uh, I'm starting. I, I'm not saying I like it. I don't know if I do. I would have much preferred to see what Draymond Jones can do in a new sit situation. But uh, when you draft a Byron Murphy, when you spend your highest value pick by far on a defensive lineman, it does kind of indicate that there might be something else happening with the team. All right. See you guys later. Go Hawks. See you all tonight.